everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Shine Online. We're super excited that you are all here. We have a wonderful roundtable discussion here. I got Silaman. Hello, everybody. And we got our friend BP, who is an astrologer. Hello. And we're going to be talking about uh, all kinds of things, honestly. I think it's going to be a really great discussion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So welcome, BP, to Shine Online. Hey, it's me, BP, an astrologer and a counselor. <laughs> and also a siren has decided to cross <laughs> by the second we began this chat. So <laughs> I feel like that's like a reoccurring thing with us, but we can never hear them. So they're just like an announcement for you on your uh-huh. end. And it's exciting. It's like, oh, I thought trigger. it was really loud. That's <laughs> nah, just how we enter, you know, it's, it's funny. a nice entrance. <laughs> <laughs> but how are you today? Are you enjoying your day? I am enjoying the day. I'm having one of those um, kind of a Mercury retrograde day. But other than that, I'm vibing. And I'm really excited to chat, too, about all things astrology and feeling better. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a a main theme of Shine Online is getting through any of the funk, any of the darkness and shadow of life. And and, uh, I think this is really a beautiful topic, Um, working with astrology. It's something that I could definitely um you know learn more about so i'm glad that you're here to kind of teach us and help us through um you know finding that self-empowerment through uh, astrology i'm very excited to be here also i forgot to ask how are you guys today we are good i'm doing good i'm excited to shine online and it's always a good day when we get to bring a bunch of people together and and do stuff like what we're doing Yeah, it's been a really exciting time getting this all together and seeing everything, you know, fall into place. And it is important to, you know, find ways to shine on through this dark energy. And I I love looking at the stars and all things spacey when I'm feeling down, because it kind of reminds me that, you know, the universe is a really big and beautiful place. And there's so many things happening beyond our typical mind's eye. But if we pay attention to little details or little synchronicities, especially through astrology, it really can affect our energy and how we move about our life. Highly agree. I feel like the universal component of astrology is one that can be more grounding than you'd expect. If you think about the stars as far away, you know, it just feels kind of abstract. But for me, it was really nice to be grounded with the universe up and down, you know, look up, look down vibes. Yeah, I, I bet like our ancient ancestors worked a lot with astrology and the stars and um, working with them as like a map to get around the world or, you know, mm-hmm. I, it's been an ancient practice, I think, for a while. So um, I, I definitely feel like it's getting connected to our roots in a way. It's true. It is so old. (laughs) People have been doing that since like written history. And it makes a lot of sense because like what is going on? I couldn't imagine not (laughs) getting curious at some point. Um, What do you guys know about astrology? How do you use it in your life? Those kinds of things. Mm, So I think astrology kind of started for me in um, the path of moonology. I was really kind of affected by the moon and I was always staring at the sky and like I would feel a difference in the people around me during that time and Mm -hmm. for the longest time the only thing I knew other than about the moon phases was that my sun sign was a Leo and then I was like all right so I started learning people's sun signs but it wasn't until recently I started learning more about like the big three of different people and um just how different personality types can really vary depending on all the different placements of the house. Like for so long, it was just the sun sign does this and this person's a Pisces and that person's a Capricorn and like, they're all like this, but it's really like a whole blueprint from, from my perspective. And I I like to kind of um, compare it to a video game. I think we've had this discussion before where Mm -hmm. it's like a Sims character, like your different signs is like how much is filled out into each person's personality traits. And it like reflects in such a unique way for everybody. I really like that view. I want to start using that when I talk to clients and be like, so this is uh, your Sims character. It was built this mm-hmm. way. There's a dash of Scorpio here and Capricorn there. I love that. <laughs> like how they react in their love language is their Venus and how they act in their strength is their this or that. And like, I don't know much about each of them. And I feel like I learn the more I experience people that talk, know a lot about their different signs and talk about them, which is why I love like talking to you about the different things. 
but it is just like everyone has such a unique blueprint. And I think that's why it seems empowering when you start learning about the different levels of you and where the stars just happen to have lined. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah really, I, like that. I was going to say that's definitely a cool thing is knowing where every planet was situated the exact moment that you were born. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I was really glad you phrased it that way, because that was one point I wanted to raise before we even, you know, talked more deeply about astrology, Um, was sort of like a, it's like a misconception, a myth that goes around with astrology that can make it seem maybe less appealing or like a little bit scary. And it's that sometimes people feel like maybe astrology or the planets or the moon are making us do things or making things be bad. It's like a sort of maybe a language difference, but I hear it a lot. Like, how can Mercury make this happen to me? Or why am I this way? Because the sun said so. Um, But astrology is just the study of the movements of the planets and the sun and the stars and the patterns of their influence or like, correlation, the information they can give you about yourself and the affairs of the world. But the difference is that it's correlated, not causing it. So like correlation versus causation, it's reflecting you back to you. You know what I mean? Rather than like telling you that this is how you're going to be, it's more showing you how it is um, from their point of view. Um, sometimes people use the analogy of a clock <laughs> um, and it's kind of a loose analogy, but it'll be like the clock says that it's 3 p.m. Did the clock make it be 3 p.m.? No, but it's telling you that it's 3 p.m. And that's kind of the way astrology works. Like if you're born in the sign of Capricorn when the sun was there, <laughs> um, the sun didn't make you be a Capricorn you were born when the sun was in Capricorn. And so your sun sign reflects it back to you. It shows you you, but like in birth chart map format or the chart of the world at the moment. Um, But I'm glad that you phrase it in a way that it's um, reflecting what's going on with us through the stars language. Mm. So more like some people can think they're a certain way, but then other people see them as a certain way. So more people will see you as like what that reflects the sun sign and whatnot can you can you rephrase that question oh my goodness (laughs) so i think we probably see ourselves different than other people see us Mm -hmm. so that's why some people might get like offended or might not try to you know like get into astrology because it's going to tell you how it is and Maybe some people don't like that. Like sometimes I don't like telling people what I am and how I am and things Seal's, like that. Seal is nervous about people finding out his actual chart. One, because I think it's like <laughs> your time situation. You don't actually know what specific time. So anytime we try to bring up Seal's chart, he's like, I don't think that's right. It must have been a different time. Well, we tried different times <laughs> and different things were like not resonating. <laughs> yeah, so. but that goes into the the idea too there's different types of astrology correct so maybe he is resonating on a frequency with a different um ideology of, of astrology what's your feels on that there's a few different i guess branches i don't know if that's the right word um of astrology or different traditions or ways of doing it that tend to come from Uh, different parts of the world or different parts of history, different cultures, and they all kind of morph over time, you know, they become more modernized. But sometimes things like planetary rulers can entirely change between maybe traditional astrology, and modern astrology, or, you know, whatever type you're doing. Um, Usually people just pick the one that aligns most with their purpose for using astrology. So if you're trying to predict mundane daily events, you might use one type, or if you're trying to look for your soul's purpose in astrology, you might use another type like evolutionary astrology, which is my jam. Um, But also what you were saying about um, people maybe, a little bit of a backtrack, people reading you differently than you feel about yourself, like how you are perceiving you, 
versus how other people are and sometimes having a disconnect and that can also feel maybe like a deterrent to astrology sometimes or just like confusing that might have to do a little bit um, with the different parts of the chart like the rising sign being more of our external appearance or how we're perceived our first impression versus a sun sign which is like the core of your ego and things like that um, so I think there's a lot of value really in pulling up a whole chart through as many methods as you can um, so you kind of understand both sides of it that way does that make sense? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. Cause uh, I think we did a few of them did different times for my birth chart. And one of them was like, I had a moon Aries and a rising Aries. And I was like, oh, that doesn't feel as like as true. <laughs> but then we did another one. And it was like, it was a uh, moon Aries and uh Pisces rising. I was like, oh, maybe that like, and then what it said like resonated a little more. So I'm like, I'm kind of like feeling this one more than the other one. But yeah, I think it became clear because we did multiple one and the moon was still Aries. So apparently. So did you feel more empowered once you learned the different options of it? I have been thinking about it and Aries is like a fire sign. And so it makes sense because like sometimes when I get emotional, I get really fired up. I was like, well, that, that makes sense. Like, so I like, I guess I was um, more compassionate towards myself because I was less like, I just get fired up, like being a D hole or something. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just, I have an Aries moon apparently. So. Okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> the rising sign changes every few minutes. Um, so that can be, pretty confusing if you don't have <laughs> that time I'm usually out here encouraging people on the regular like let's go find your birth certificate <laughs> or call your parents or anything of the sort because it can make a big difference even in five minutes and then your whole chart all the houses will look different everything will be helter skelter but for the uh, moon sign stuff usually the moon stays in one sign for an entire day or at least a good chunk of a day mm -hmm. um, so if you can estimate birth time you can usually get your moon sign out of it so that's probably on point the aries moon <laughs> yeah. but, but the rising like it's a little touchy so yeah it's gotta be about <laughs> yeah it's like three minutes apart sometimes so okay and um for anybody who's like still new kind of like me um, could you explain like the difference between the sun sign, the moon sign, and the rising sign? Sure. Okay. So the sun sign is usually what we hear about in maybe pop astrology or popular type of culture astrology, or uh, if you're old like myself, what you would read in the newspaper when you would read the horoscope column, mm -hmm. uh, you would look under the sun sign. It's like you say, I'm a Virgo or I'm a Leo, like they're talking about sun signs. Um, and that has to do with kind of your core center being your ego. It's quite, quite important in a birth chart and for you. But there are many other bodies in the sky at the time of your birth. It's not just the sun. Um, so then you have a rising sign, which is on the horizon right when you're, uh, right when you're born. And that shows more of the exterior situation. Um, some people call it a mask. That word's becoming like not so popular in the astrological community for rising signs anymore. But what they mean by that is it's your first impression you give to other people, maybe your first reaction, sometimes what you look like, um, just surface level, more type of things, surface level personality versus your core with your sun. And then your moon sign is your inner emotions, your private inner world, the things that you might not share with everyone upon your first meeting um, with different people. But sometimes it has to do with comfort as well and what makes you feel secure and safe. And a lot of times that relates to then our childhood, what made us feel safe then or didn't, um, and how we deal with emotions internally. 
So sometimes uh, people can even identify with their moon sign more than their sun sign because it's their inner world and their inner emotions. They're like, yeah, that's what I feel. So this is my, this is my vibe. Um, but those three go together to paint sort of a, a good baseline, big three personality type because it has like three different layers. But of course, there's a whole chart full of planets and other dimensions. Mm -hmm. Nice blend of things. Mm. <laughs> cool. Um, so I know that there's so many things that I don't, I don't understand. Um, lunar nodes, like I don't understand that. <laughs> Um, you said evolutionary astrology, and I'm like, that sounds dope. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want me to talk about evolutionary astrology? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to find a way how to like, but I, I just don't understand things. So, well, to... it's not super popular, so I don't blame you. I don't hear a lot of people just walking around talking about lunar nodes like in the grocery store. So that's probably a pretty common. <laughs> sentiment um how are your lunar nodes doing right now yeah i feel like people will be like huh <laughs> <laughs> um but i like evolutionary astrology it's a, a type of astrology i gravitated towards pretty early on in my astrology journey um, because it encompasses more of a, a spiritual component to the situation or a soulful aspect that goes beyond maybe personality traits or compatibility or like little predictions about what's going to happen next Tuesday, which all have a lot of value um, in their own ways. But since I was more of a spiritual type and had had a spiritual awakening, I needed a type of astrology um, that could kind of help me with that or, you know, guide me through that and in turn become my career and guide others through it. Um, so evolutionary astrology looks at birth charts through a different lens. Um, so maybe in like traditional astrology or some other branch, the birth chart would be a map of the sky at the time and place of your birth, describing your personality and values, things like that, like a picture of you, but space version. Um, but evolutionary astrology uh, views the birth chart as a map of a soul's journey over many lifetimes and reflects those back to you through certain chart placements, my favorite being the lunar nodes. Um, there's a few more that are in focus with evolutionary astrology, but there's a pretty fundamental then difference because one is more of your current life personality through other types of astrology but evolutionary astrology says this is a map of a soul and what the soul wants to learn in this life it includes past lives and some maybe karma that's kind of like a buzzword these days um, but larger themes then and themes that relate to your soul and where you're going and where you you know where you want to go where you are now um, it's one that I find very nice because you can use it as a guide when you feel really lost on a soul level <laughs> um, or if you're someone who has like a spiritual practice or you like the crossover situation with that. Um, evolutionary astrology is the stuff. <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, so how, did, how does one like get started in evolutionary astrology and like what is the process like uh, of learning about your, your soul's journey? Well, the way I do it, <laughs> um, I usually have people, um, clients and such coming to me full on beginner mode, uh, no like astrological education required to show up and start looking at lunar nodes or other things, I mean, maybe a little bit. Um, but the lunar nodes are always my favorite place with evolutionary astrology um, because they show that soul journey in a kind of a linear way, which is pretty nice. Um, but there's other placements like Pluto um, and Chiron and asteroids and all kinds of things. Um, I could tell you about lunar nodes or we could go tutorial mode, whatever mm -hmm. you like. <laughs> well, do you think it would be a good 
and of use to those watching if um, you had any sort of suggestion on how they could find their chart in general to see what their nodes are. Maybe we could explain kind of like the beginning of that process and dive into nodes that way. Okay, does that mean we should go like screen share mode and tutorial how to like literally pull up yeah, you can you show us how to pull up a website? Is that something you can help us do? I can definitely do that. How, oh no, now I gotta figure out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the share screen button should be at the bottom. Yeah. I if I set it so everybody can screen share. Let's do this. Has that worked? Yeah. Yeah. I totally see it. Thank you. So okay, so this is me on the internet right now. <laughs> <laughs> the only one tab. Yeah, so if you wanted to pull up your birth chart um, and visualize it, like see it as an image, maybe rather than just knowing um, my sun is this, rising is this in a list, or you wanted to know what your lunar nodes are, you should make it clear that there are two lunar nodes in everyone's birth chart, um, a north and a south node, they're nodes of the moon. They're not planets, they're points. Um, and without being too technical, you'll have two opposing zodiac signs um, for lunar nodes. And a way you can find that out for free is this website, which I am not affiliated with in any way, mm -hmm. um, with no connection to it in that type of sense. I just find that it's pretty accurate um, and one that's pretty easy. This is astro.com. Again, I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't vouch for all of the, the features on this website, but it seems to be pretty simple. Um, and they have the horoscopes section, and you can go up in here to extended chart selection. Um, and in doing that, this is where that whole process begins of finding out your nodes and all that. Um, I'm clicking the data entry page. Because this is where you type in your birth information. Ah, oh, not, the, not the privacy policy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll type in my info then, um, I guess, because that seems like a safe example. Have you guys done all this and whatnot? Been on the, what do you use when you look at astrology charts and things? Mm, I don't really use anything, but some, um, Shane and Zan actually got us. Uh, or like charts for our birthday a long time ago. And that was pretty cool. I like that. I believe when I was like first getting into it, I think there was this website called like Astro Cafe or something like that. But I was always curious, like which one was the most like accurate. So it's nice to have something that, you know, somebody who does astrology on the daily recommends. So this is cool. <laughs> yeah, I recommend this one. Um, if you need a free resource to pull up a birth chart. Um, when I'm doing professional work, I use software, um, so I don't use it for work-related reasons, but like to get your stuff for free, this seems like a good spot. Um, and when it says birth data entry, we're talking about the location you're born, the time you're born, um, and the day that you're born. And knowing the time here with the, with the minutes is pretty important, but this is where you would do that. Um, and this is the part where we get to add the nodes to your chart. So if you were to see this screen, you could just show the chart and you would have, boom, math, a chart. But since we want to see the nodes in particular, we have to do a little scroll to display and calculation options, and then make sure we select true node and descending node, which are just their words for saying <laughs> um, North and South node, I, you know, just click those. <laughs> um, and if you're really, really new to astrology, and this is going to be your first time looking at your birth chart in a visual way, I would suggest going up here to options for Zodiac and houses, and it will say house system, default, nothing wrong with that. Um, and for those of you that do astrology, you'll know that that's Placidus houses. It's just a way of dividing the chart through time. I would suggest clicking this little menu and going to pulse sign houses, simply because it will be easier for you to read where your nodes are. Uh, the lines will be just clearer for you um, if it's your first time, but you don't have to do that. 
So then you can show the chart and boom, it is a birth chart. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is the chart and the part that we're talking about here, the lunar nodes are the parts that look like horseshoes. That's not a technical term. It just looks like a horseshoe. Um, so that would be this little guy uh, in Sagittarius and Gemini. Um, the North node is the upright horseshoe. And then the South node is the upside down horseshoe. And they'll always be in opposite sides of the wheel, no matter where they fall for you. Um, is it showing where like my mouse is and all of yeah. that or not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this one is a uh, North node style. And you look to the outer wheel to see which sign that's in. So in this case, the North node is then in Sagittarius. And if you wanted to be a little more advanced about it, you could then look to the inside of this particular circle. And these numbers are house numbers, which we won't have time to explain mm -hmm. uh, what those are, but they refer to areas of life, of your life, 12 areas of life. And you could see which number uh, your nodes are in, which area of life, the sixth and twelfth house in this case. Yeah, so that's how you can find out these things. And if you were to do this and you didn't know what all of these symbols meant on the inside here, this is representing planets, nodes, the moon, all of that. And like, that doesn't mean anything to you. They look like squiggles. Uh, they have this very neat little list over here where they have a legend, a code for the uh, little symbols and then what planet they mean and what sign they're in. So it's written here as well that the true node is in Sagittarius. But I find that Capricorn. <laughs> yeah, both are good because then you can, uh, you can see it in two formats at the same time. So yeah. That's, that's where you would start. And this would be your chart that you would want to become familiar with. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Yeah, that was really cool. Thanks for showing everybody. Of course, yeah. And again, I don't know astro.com, so <laughs> um, there's a lot of features on there, but I can't, you know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but that's for anybody one just getting started, it's probably good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that chart calculator is, accurate so you don't have to worry about getting some false results or anything confusing that way mm -hmm. beautiful thank you for showing us that of course yeah yeah so that's neat i think it's good everyone has kind of like a launching point now i know for me though when i first looked at my chart it was so overwhelming and it was very useful to have um others that were really you know more uh versed in astrology so it's always good to get a session with someone like yourself um, but I, I am curious, like, what is it about astrology that brings you peace personally? Okay. Well, as, astrology as a whole, I suppose, can bring me peace, not just evolutionary astrology, um, but like astrology for the collective, um, those types of things. It helps me to see the events that are going on either within my life or the world and especially lately as the world has been like a dumpster fire, um, <laughs> having astrology as a tool to understand what's happening to me or to us um, through that lens of the universe and the stars, like we talked about earlier, it's reflecting back to us, um, our experiences here of ourself and of life. And so having a different perspective um, coming from, you know, of course, planets, but having a different set of language to describe myself or my experiences um, or the world and having a perspective that's separate in a way, um, but also connecting at the same time, it's very useful um, to get another view of it. And I also like to use it as a tool to understand um, myself, my inner workings, to understand other people um, in my life or in general, and to understand the collective events um, in a way that is more complex. It is more deep. 
Um, and it adds some layers that feel very validating as well. Um, if you're having like a real bad day and man, the astrology shows it, that feels good <laughs> to have another perspective that says, um, yes, this is what is happening. Or if this is the pattern you've got going on, or this could be what would make your soul feel fulfilled or whatever you're using astrology for. I just find that it's it's empowering that way. Um, and it can be reassuring and validating if done in a loving way, of course. Um, yeah. So I, I was curious when, you know, things are happening. Um, I think even the 222-22 number was kind of like a big thing that people were talking about where like, throughout history around this kind of time, like systems have gone down, like governments have kind of shifted. Um, how do you find that information out? Like, how do you know that 300 years ago was the last alignment that this happened? Or is there a source that you go to? Do you find that out yourself? And is there a place where you share that? Or how do people find that kind of stuff out? Uh, a large question, because there's maybe like a million resources um, on where to find mm -hmm. astrological information, depending on what you're doing with it and who you like to listen to about it. Um, but in general, and kind of all of astrology, is looking up historical patterns of events and seeing what the sky was doing at that time. So maybe we start to notice that when Pluto is in a certain place, um, certain activities on Earth are happening pretty much every time. <laughs> um, and we can use that to then make future predictions based on those patterns. And that could go for every planet in any position. Um, so you would have to have a base understanding of the planets and their functions, and then, um, look to times in the past when the planets were in that position and see what was happening. Um, that's just history. Does that make sense? Did I answer the question? <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering, like, is there a website where you can click a calendar and it would show you the alignment? For like years past, because I think you're referencing the Pluto thing as well. There was some talk about every time Pluto's in a certain space, there's like different civilizations that they, they evolve in different ways. Some self-destruct, others kind of go into evolution mode. And um, that is kind of a curious question. Like, where do you find out where Pluto was in like 1700 BC or something like that? Like, do people have a way to do that? Like, shoot, I wish I could think of a free way to do that. That's what I'm struggling with at the moment. I have some astrology software. I use something called Astro Gold. That's not like a cheap option. Mm -hmm. um, that's something you might invest in as a professional. Um, but that kind of software is how astrologers can, um, we can set a date and time and it will just calculate where the planets were at that time. Um, so we can look at the chart for any moment, past, present, future, um, from a certain location but for free i'm trying to think of a place that could do that well do you know any anybody who kind of like talks about this stuff on on the regular that you trust uh the astrology podcast is always a good recommendation for learning about um maybe like the year ahead or years past or education that's by Chris Brennan, who's a traditional astrologer. It's not the same kind of astrology that I practice, but like a pretty solid resource um, from beginner to advanced that I think is pretty popular. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. like that one. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I got off the top of my head. <laughs> it's, it's something I know a lot of people these days they get it off just like random YouTubes and TikTok like I'm not yeah. gonna lie your TikTok's one of my main sources of astrology information <laughs> oh my TikTok is a mess <laughs> oh what, what is your TikTok yeah what is your TikTok and your others like where can people find you if they want to follow you and your astrology practices uh my TikTok the Username is my name is BP, <laughs> which I set once, like maybe two years ago, and then could not change. <laughs> um, so that's my TikTok, and I post mostly just messy memes about astrology with like also some education. Um, and then Instagram, comedy too, right? <laughs> yeah, mostly like roasting myself. <laughs> you got a lot of you got a lot of activity happening though. It's it's really cool to see. 
it's really fun on there. I really, it's, I really enjoyed it. It's a unique way to learn too, because like, if I sit there and I read all the technical stuff, I'm like, okay, so this house means this, this house means that, but seeing you kind of reenact it in playful ways, it <laughs> triggers something different in my brain. I'm like, oh, that makes way more sense. So I think that is a unique, fun way to, to get astrology out there into the world. And then you have some more, um, grounded options I suppose like your Instagram is another nice source of useful information so how do people find you other outside the TikTok lens outside the TikTok lens yeah we've got Instagram it's at BP online there's underscores BP underscore online underscore but I think you can just search probably BP online and find it or look um maybe bring me to life network you know we're all up in each other's posts sometimes <laughs> Uh, on Instagram, I post more less chaotic content, uh, content that is educational or maybe graphics about the current transits or what the moon is up to and how that might impact us here on Earth. Um, and then my website is lunarcounseling.com. And that's where all of my offerings are professionally to work with um, astrology clients one to one. Uh, doing lunar node stuff and kind of anything really there's a lot of options um, within chart type of session work but there's also an option on there to get um, video replies from me to your That's astrological nice. questions mm -hmm. so if someone had like a quick question or was like what does my moon in Scorpio mean um, that would be a way that you could get some grounded content delivered directly to you for a more affordable type of interaction but uh yeah that's those are my three main places that i'd be at awesome and uh i, I believe you also have a download people can get from your website that's true i was like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i do um i have a pdf download uh that i wrote about the lunar nodes it's just uh more information more flushed out um about what they represent um, each node itself and a little bit technical about what they actually are like how do we get the math for those two points that kind of stuff neat so I love that you have that video quick kind of option because sometimes people are like I don't have the brain capacity or the time to do like a full session but in general like what's your favorite kind of sessions to do with people if they want to shine on with you what's your favorite type of like person to call in to work with <laughs> lunar node sessions mm -hmm. um Lunar nodes are certainly my specialty in astrology and a passion of mine. And that tends to, to um, pull in folks who want to find a direction to move in when they're feeling a little bit stuck or like they're in a rut or they keep repeating the same set of patterns or even just something keeps on happening to them. Um, like the same thing over and over the nodes can be a way to redirect your focus or energy in a way that feels the most aligned for you personally but on like a soul level beyond just uh what would be like most compatible with you astrologically it's like what would feel the most fulfilling um, and so i see a lot of people who are maybe they kind of know what they're doing, but it just doesn't feel complete or fulfilling or like they're living their purpose. They're like, I'm here, but it's not right. Something is not, this is not it. Or they want to pivot and don't quite know where. And so we can give them very specific and sometimes very literal things that they can do uh, that will feel better. <laughs> um, I find those to be just my absolute favorite is a lunar node mode. <laughs> wow i love it I yeah love it. yeah that's awesome so uh when life gets a little wonky like reach out to bp she's got you covered bp online well i want to <laughs> thank you for shining on with us because that's really what shine online has been all about is giving people you know a direction and through the chaos and to help them wake up so uh, mm -hmm. i really appreciate you having this conversation with us is there anything else you feel guided or channeled to, sh to share right now as, as we move on through this amazing event hmm. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. This has been very fun, as it always is <laughs> uh, when we get to chat. And as for anything coming through, well, it would be to leave you on an uplifting note um, on collective astrology. 
um, on the transiting planetary movements coming up in the future. Right now, the planets are in a position that is a little rough, um, and it has been for quite a while, but it's particularly, it's giving winter energy. It's been like a little bit of hunkering down and like working through stuff, um, or maybe having more of a, like an inner debacle, a mental situation based on, you know, a lot of winter signs basically. But soon uh, the planets will do some scooting into some more pleasant locations, many of them all at once. And so I think we can look forward to March and April and May in the astrology where the planets move to some very benefic locations for us. And maybe we can reap some of the rewards of our winter struggles. Um, so everyone out there, you can look forward to the, the planets supporting you in the next few months, more than they maybe have been. <laughs> Yay, thank you, God. And... <laughs> Something to look forward to. Well, yeah. that is a good note. Thank you for that message, BP. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else you'd like to, to share, ask the mom? I just want to thank you so much for all that you do and for coming on here, teaching us a little bit about astrology. I hope people go and check out BP, especially check out the Lunar Nodes, get that PDF on our website. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just really grateful for you. Um, Nostradamus. <laughs> this has been really fun. I love learning all the things stars and signs related. And I, I hope that those that are listening really enjoyed this discussion and you stay tuned for the upcoming offerings here on shine online and yeah until then stay awake and shine on uh, uh, uh. thanks for shining on with us